Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be doing a brief introduction to heredity for introductory biology students in high school. This is meant as just an introduction, so if you need a deeper view of any of these topics, feel free to look for other videos on my channel to help you out. Backing up, let's remember that DNA holds the instructions for proteins in a cell, and proteins are going to determine our traits and physical characteristics from the cellular level all the way up to the entire organismal level. And the topic of heredity encompasses how traits are passed from one organism to another. Now, you might have studied this a little bit before in your previous science classes, but we'll find here that it gets a little bit more complex than just simple dominant and recessive traits. For example, we're going to look at different patterns of inheritance, and you'll be able to predict offspring ratios based on a variety of inheritance patterns, including regular dominance, codominance, incomplete dominance, multiple alleles, sex-linked traits, and of course, we'll be working with Punnett squares as well. We'll also talk about how genes can be influenced by the environment. For example, in identical twin studies, we can see that identical twins separated at birth can have different heights and weights after 20 years. Most likely the cause of these differences is that each twin was provided a different diet and had different physical activities throughout their lifetimes because an environment does play a role in influencing individuals. All right, so first we have to start with a little bit of our basics. So let's look at a karyotype. Now remember, a karyotype is just an image of all the chromosomes in the nucleus of an organism's any one cell. So in humans, we have 46 total chromosomes, or 23 pairs. So remember that the first 22 pairs, these are called autosomes. And the two that are left, these are our sex chromosomes. If you're biologically female, you have two X sex chromosomes. If you're biologically male, your sex chromosomes are X and Y. Now we do see some differences in certain genetic disorders where we can have different combinations of these, but we'll get into that when we start talking about genetic differences. So how do we get a karyotype of a baby that's not born yet? Well, we can use something called amniocentesis. Amniocentesis, or an amniotic fluid test, is a medical procedure used in prenatal diagnosis of genetic disorders and fetal abnormalities. So what happens is a small amount of amniotic fluid, which is here, is gonna contain some fetal tissues, and it's gonna be extracted from the amniotic sac with a large needle, and once we take it out, the DNA can be examined for genetic abnormalities, or we can simply see the biological sex of the individual. Now, not all women choose to do this because there is a small risk involved in the procedure of amniocentesis, but if you elect to do it, or if you're high-risk pregnancy, some women will be able to see a karyotype of their child before they're born. Now, remember, a normal human karyotype has 23 pairs of chromosomes, including the sex chromosomes here. This individual has all 23 pairs, one X and one Y. If you look closely, you can see this individual is a biological male. So when we look at our karyotype, we're going to identify and evaluate the size and the shape and the number of chromosomes in our sample body of cells. Some problems that we could see would be duplicates of chromosomes where there shouldn't be, or deletions of certain arms of chromosomes, or translocations of chromosomes. One difference we could see right away is if there was a third chromosome at the 21st position. Now all the chromosomes aren't arranged like this. Scientists have to make sure that they are arranged after the picture is taken into the correct order for the correct chromosomes. But once they are arranged, we can look and determine if there's any genetic abnormalities. For example, at the 21st location, if there's a third chromosome, we would have what's called trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome. Trisomy just means three copies of a chromosome. You'll discover more of these genetic differences when we talk about that later in our unit. Now, you also might have heard about Gregor Mendel, or the father of genetics. So let's take it way back. Mendel was the person that deduced that genes come in pairs and are inherited as distinct units from one parent. He tracked the segregation of parental genes and their appearance in the offspring as dominant or recessive traits. He also recognized the mathematical patterns of inheritance from one generation to the next, and he created laws of heredity, which we'll be learning about in our class. Mendel did a lot of great work in his experiments, and they took about eight years to complete. He published his work in 1865, but unfortunately he wasn't really recognized or thought of as important until after his time. So when he died, other monks actually hid some of his journals, and his work was later recognized as extremely important in genetics. We know that he worked with over 10,000 different pea plants during his experiments, and he took meticulous results, recording down all of his data by hand. So we're almost done, but I want to make sure we get through some important vocabulary that you're going to be seeing over and over again in genetics. A lot of genetics is vocabulary, so make sure you record these words and their definitions in your notes. A gene or genes are pieces of DNA that determine your traits. An allele is just a different form of a gene. If we're writing out genetics problems, this might be written as a big B or a little b, for example. A recessive gene can be masked by a dominant one, and a dominant allele can mask a recessive one. 
Often dominant alleles are represented by capital letters. A genotype is the actual combination of alleles that somebody has. A phenotype are the physical characteristics that come from that genotype. So for example, your physical characteristic could be tall. That's your phenotype. Homozygous is when we have an allele pair that has two of the same allele. So for example, a little a, little a, or a big A, big A. Heterozygous is when we have two different alleles together in one genotypic pair. For example, big A, little a. We'll get lots more practice with this throughout the genetics unit, but make sure you record these words down so you have a strong foundation to start. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you later.